Hello there, Angel Fire here, and today we're going to be talking about the Starbound Nightly Builds. Now, I love Starbound. It's a fantastically fun sandbox style game, and Chucklefish are actively doing a lot of things to improve it every week, resulting in nightly releases available to players to test out improvements and new features before stabilising them for a proper release. Over the past few weeks, there's been a lot of tidying up done to many different things in game. Lush biomes, pretty much the starter planets, have had multiple structures added to them, from little wooden red stops to ruined castle towers. It's great to see a little bit more life given to the first worlds you explore, even literally. Leading on from that, another feature they've been working on are passive little critters to help the atmosphere of maps. And I've got to say, it works. They're adorable, and there are already about 25 different kinds, ranging from the cute and cuddly to the fleshy and weird. On that note, there have also been changes to higher level worlds, such as the toxic and swamp biomes, giving them more personality and, in some cases, better background parallaxes. One of the most prominent updates about the starting worlds, for me personally, is the increase in uses for core fragments. No longer do they just sit there looking pretty, you'll want to mine them up to create upgrade modules, now the main tradable for ship upgrades, and also useful for creating more powerful versions of the lantern stick. This change is part of an overhaul on upgrading in general. The newly implemented items include manipulator modules to craft matter manipulator upgrades, as pickaxes are now dungeon loot only items, and tech chips to craft the newly renamed tech drives. Another item involved in this are auto chips and auto drives for future vehicle related things, but we have yet to see those put in the game properly. All of the relevant items to craft these upgrades are available through mining or hunting, so there's now no need to section off the deepest depths of your mine shafts. Another small change to note is that the core, at least on my current world, is now hollow rather than molten, so be careful. An important new addition to any underground system, whether on the starting worlds or not, are the new Challenge Door dungeons. Built by the Ancients, these mini-missions are good parkour challenges and contain bonus areas if you have the right tech upgrades. The new chips and drives are a common drop in the final chest of these dungeons, so it's a good idea to seek them out. They'll disappear once you complete them though, so be prepared to find a lot of them if you want to upgrade fast. In other news, new traders are in town. Drop by the outpost to meet the mineral trading miner who'll give you cash for your metals and gems, coming part and parcel with a long-awaited selling system. It's only for precious items, but I'm sure it's a sign of things to come. Or visit Frog Furnishing for all your homemaking needs. He currently gives a few gothic display pieces, but I'm confident he'll have more in stock with future updates. And to finish off, Chucklefish are having a story competition. If you've ever wanted to get some Starbound writing of yours into the game, here's your chance. The limit is 500 words, the deadline's the 14th of August, and the top 5 winners gain Starbound merch. Check out the blog post about it in the description below. And that's been some of the newest additions and updates to Starbound. If you want to support me and help me keep you up to date with news and views on what's new, like this video or leave me a comment telling me what games or features you'd like me to take a look at. Thanks for watching, I've been Angelfire, and I hope you'll tune in next time. <laughs>